Hello everyone, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws once again, bringing you the sixth tutorial video in my series on beginning game programming in Monkey. In this video, we're going to be learning all about how to add loops to our programs. So let's get loopy. Now you might be asking yourself, what, what's a loop? I'll tell you what a loop is. What a loop is. A loop is something in a program that allows you to execute a chunk of code repeatedly for as many times as you want. You can either do it infinitely or you can do it for a set number of times like 10, 20, whatever. And so starting with a fresh main function, we're going to create a little variable to play with during this tutorial. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it without initialization. By default in monkey it's set to zero. So that's perfect for what we're doing. And the first loop I'm going to show you is the while loop. And what the, what the while loop does, basically, it's kind of like the if statement in that it's checking for this expression to come out true. And if it is, it's going to jump in and execute any code you have inside its block. But what makes that while loop different from an if statement is once it reaches this end, doesn't just keep continue, keep on continuing with the code. It's going to go back to the front, to the start, and check again to see if this condition is true. And if it is, it's going to execute the code again. And in this case, we don't want to do that forever. So we are going to increment number by one each loop. And then once it kicks out, we're going to print something to the console that shows what happens to number after it runs through the loop. And as a little aside here, deal when dealing with the local variables, you'll see I've initialized this local variable outside of the while loop, which allows me to use it inside the while loop. But if I were to create a, another local variable inside the while loop, we'll call it x, and assign it to something like 4, if we were to try to use that outside of this while loop, outside of this block, we will have errors. And that's because local variables can only be accessed inside the block they were declared in. Whether it's a while block like this, a function block, an if block, any kind of block. So we're going to go ahead and change this back to number so you can see what happens to it. Um, just reading this code you can kind of guess that while number is less than 10, it's going to keep jumping inside this, jumping inside this code, incrementing number by one, and going back up until number. Well, in this case, until number equals 10, because once number equals 10, it's no longer less than 10. So we'll see when we build it. We're going to see number is now 10. It started out as zero up here, then went through this loop 10 times, incrementing by one. And once it hit 10 skips out. It doesn't execute it again. It skips out and continues on with the code. Alright. And that's the while loop. The next one I'm going to show you is the repeat until loop. Let's do the damn thing. Now what makes the repeat until loop different from the while loop are a few things. Firstly, instead of repeating until this condition you set is false, like the while loop does, the while repeats while this condition is true, the repeat loop is going to repeat, and I'm going to throw in a number equals zero here to reset it so we can work with it again. The repeat is going to keep looping while this condition is false, and then once it's true it's going to stop looping and kick out. And the while loop is waiting for this condition to be false, to kick out. So that's one thing. And another thing is that because your condition down here is at the end of the loop, it's always going to execute the code you put in here at least once. No matter what your condition here is, it's going to execute it at least once. And this can be useful in some situations. And then uh, the last thing that makes it different is you might have noticed that it's repeat until and there's no end keyword to finish off the block. And that just because repeat until is a special case. It's got 
it needs this condition at the end of it and so instead of doing until this and then end which looks ugly look at that that's ugly it's just you use the until keyword to signify when the loop ends and then you got your condition after that and it all works and I can show you real fast so you can see that it's going we're going to get the same result as we did before and that's that it's going to repeat until number is 10 and then once it's out number will be 10 and it will output as such and now the final loop I'm going to show you in this video is the numerical for loop and what the numerical for loop gives you is a little more control over you know instead of having to type number plus equals one and incrementing this variable every time it does it for you so we'll say in this case we're gonna go four now you can use number or any other variable you've already declared but, or what you can also do with for loops is you can declare a new variable and that's what you're gonna find is that's usually what you're gonna do and it's gonna be a, some variable like i i is a very common for loop variable that's used and you're gonna initialize it with a number and then it's gonna repeat this for loop over and over until i becomes a number you specify after this and so it's gonna go start at one go up to ten and then stop and we can go and close this off and so you can see you don't have to now that we have number being in, or in this case our variable i being incremented automatically we can do something else well you can always do something else but we're going to do something else in here and you can kind of see what i is as this loop goes along and i'm actually going to change this to five so i don't have to scroll down when it prints it off so now i'm going to run it real fast so you can kind of see what it does you see here it's ran through the loop five times each time i was incremented by one and went through one through five and get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Now another thing with the for loop, if you don't want to include the five, you want to just go until it reaches a number and stop, use the until no keyword. What it's going to do is going to start at one, go through the loop until it reaches five, but not including five. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, see that i is now five, then stop, kick out. And go and check that, see it in action. There you go, one, two, three, four. And now the last thing I'm going to show you with the for loop is something that allows you to have even more control over this iteration. Use the step keyword. And what the step keyword does is allows you to determine how much this variable you use gets incremented each time. So by default it's one. We're going to go ahead and set this to two, and then we're going to change this to ten. And what we're going to predict that it's going to do is it's going to start at 1, print i as 1, go through, and then once it goes back up, it's going to increment by 2. So now, in this case, the next one, i is going to be 3, then it's going to be 5, 7, 9. And then it's going to be 11, which is greater than 10, so it's not going to print that. Let's see, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And those are your basic loops. Uh, there is, however, one more type of loop in Monkey that I'm going to show you called the for each in, which is only going to come into play with arrays and lists, which is what I'm going to be covering. Well, arrays. I'm going to be covering arrays next. So stay with me. See you in the next video. And don't forget, you can email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or you can like leave some comments down below. All right, I'll see you in the next one.